Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we have a very special episode featuring the one, the only Lane Bolin. And for those of you who don't know, you're about to know, uh, Lane Bolin actually is uh, right now our newest and latest uh addition to our dream team at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. He's the director of enrollments with Mortgage Marketing Coach. Uh, just to give you a little background on himself, he's got a rather prolific string of rock star um, achievements in his wake. I'm just going to give you a few of them. He graduated from West Point, uh, top of his class in demerits. Uh, he's an right. army guy who was on the front lines uh, for literally 10 years with all kinds of incredible uh, feats on the front lines. Purple Heart recipient, Bronze Star winner, 35 months in Iraq, got uh, hit not once, not twice, three times. These are real <laughs> bullets, folks. They're not rubber bullets. They're out Forgot to kill the you. Duck. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I mean, first off, thank you for your service, brother. Oh, I mean, pleasure. that's that's uh that's nothing to sneeze at what you uh what you did on the front lines for the country in addition to that uh lane after you know having a very successful career in the army he led edward jones uh class of financial advisor rookies in assets gathered so you know that's what i call the front lines of capitalism and uh again leading the field in that respect in terms of bringing on clients and accounts and uh, money under management and then on top of that, he founded a venture capital firm. Again, keep this in mind that he was already in a place where he already had a retirement package from the army where he didn't have to work another day of his life. But this guy is all about not just success, success but significance and not sitting on his laurels collecting dust and growing moss and stagnating, but growing, expanding and contributing and making an impact in the world. And so just check this out. After already not having to work the rest of his life. He not only led the field in, at Edward Jones, he also founded a venture capital firm raising and investing over $5 million in the early stage uh, of the process and 5 million in apartments. So again, just a, another air in the quiver for the, the one and only Lane Bolin. And then on top of that, he had an entrepreneurial seizure and he built and, and uh, founded not a $1 million, but three $1 million territories. And uh, then he came to his senses and realized that his real superpowers are in influence, in leading a team, in really helping people create breakthroughs in their lives through the power of influence and what he's able to do in terms of getting on the phone with people or in this case, a podcast and be able to articulate in a way that makes true impact and transformation in people's lives. So therein lies the reason why, or at least one of the reasons why uh, we had him come on board as part of the dream team with MortgageMarketingCoach.com. I'll let you uh, <laughs> tell your story a little bit more, Elaine, but uh, super stoked to have you here and super stoked to talk about today's topic, which yes. is the shortest path to the cash for oh my gosh. mortgage professionals, mortgage brokers, and loan officers, as opposed to the long, drudgerous, oh. purgatory of suck path, which oh. is Don't do it. No, yeah, no that's so, <laughs> something very don't near and dear to my heart, boss. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, you know, what inspired me to basically come out of come out of a very early retirement was simply just impact. Uh, I I don't know what happened. I got given this gift, figuring out you know the shortest path to the cash and so yeah just just having the the uh the privilege to 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 deal with these young hustlers on the front lines of capitalism it's it, it it's fun oh my gosh it's fun yeah, uh, so it's rewarding so tell me i mean like i said before you don't need to do this uh, no. you already have a a very uh, lucrative uh, retirement you know plan with everything that you have set up right now you don't need to work Sure. Tell me, tell me, I mean, what, what was it that had you, before we get into talking about the shortest path to the cash to, yeah. to movie loan officers, what had you decide to, you know, yeah. get off the proverbial couch, even though you're not a couch <laughs> sitter, what had you decide to really reignite, not retire, but refire yeah. and decide to really step into making impact in this way? I'm just curious, just for people. 
the 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 idea of, of of being able to to build a legacy in all level with you there's a little backstory there at jones that uh the heat was on me that it was time to leave mainly because the way i was gathering those assets was such an unorthodox manner that uh in such a rigid structure uh they didn't really like that so uh they they i i could i i could feel the pressure that there was a door and so what i'm getting at is is that kind of told me I, I I I really hit hit a nerve there, and 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 so when I saw how easy it was, yeah, you know, just case in point, one year to gather ten million in assets when the expectation was two, and I was seeing how hard my peers were working to 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 generate that too, it kind of made me feel feel guilty, and and I made I made a promise to myself in the back of my head that I would give back at some point, <laughs> and you know the uh, the, the it, as soon as I finished exiting out of my last company, the opportunity appeared. And I was like, well, screw retirement. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think that's one of the overlooked and very much hidden to most gateways to true fulfillment and yeah. a true sense of living on purpose with purpose is to take the gifts, the talents, the abilities and the superpowers you gained, which usually comes out of not the radiant light of success, but mm. the you know the dark hell of failure the and swamp. trials and tribulations, the right? mud, the quagmire, the quagmire <laughs> of drama and trauma of going through hell and crawling out of the other side of hell and realizing that that can either weigh you down and be something that brings shame and 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 brings a sense of failure and heaviness, or you turn it around and say, hell, I came through the other side, now I yeah. get to shine even brighter that the depth of that darkness becomes the height of your light and you're a light warrior right you're a champion you're a winner and so there's something in your heart that just decided you know what i'm not gonna throw away no. this hell i went through i'm not gonna throw away all this muscle i built i'm gonna use yeah. it to pay it forward and make a difference in the world and so i salute you for that brother thank you I salute you for the courage of that i salute you for the you know the uh <laughs> testicle fortitude it takes uh, to do that. And also I think the, uh, the heart, you know, that you can't fake caring, you can't be half pregnant and you can't half care. And you truly, you know, care about serving people and liberating people. And I think that's why, oh. uh, you know, by divine design, our paths cross and why we're working together. And I just, uh, you know, I, I trust you implicitly because you oh, have thank the heart you. to serve <laughs> so, and you, with you, that touched, in mind, you, you touched on something there. You talk about the shortest path of the catch. You know, it, yeah, that it, it's not something you you want. You in the same way you can't be half pregnant. You can't just you know be half successful. You can't want to be successful. You need it, and until you need it, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's kind of like the guy who says, "I want to be fit." You know, he's yeah. got man, man boobs, and he's got a you know a tub around his waist, and he's feeling rather unsatisfied with. Uh, you know, his overall sense of well-being and vitality sure. and fitness. And every day it's just a little aggravation. He can either, you know, soften the problem and say, you know, I'm just big bone. It's, you know, it's just, oh. it's just, it's just a little extra COVID cushion. It's no big deal. Everyone's got COVID cushion right now. You can soften the problem, tell yourself you've got big bone and everyone's got big bone. So, you know, it's not a big deal. Or you can right. say, you know what? I'm freaking fat. And I need to do something about fixing this. And I'm sick and tired of living like this. And I've had a freaking enough of this. And I'm yep. ready to rise up and get fit and pay the price to get fit. That's, That's right. the guy who's going to get fit. Same yep. like the person who's in the loan business who is struggling just to do one million a month or two million a month, and they want to be doing five to ten million a month. If it's just like you know, I'm doing better than most. I'm doing okay. You know, it's not so bad. Obviously. That kind of person's never going to do what it takes to get fit in their, you know, metaphorically speaking, in their business because they no. keep softening the problem. So, you know, you're exactly right. People who go stratospheric and take the shortest path to the cash, they don't get it because they want it. They get it because it's a freaking must. Yep. And right? it's called and defiant result. Be, between you and me, uh, and uh, I, uh, I, I actually envy the newbies a hell of a lot more than the the average veterans. Uh, just, it, just because that. They haven't been jaded yet, and for them, this is absolute, you know, an absolute must. Because if they don't, they don't eat, and, and so yeah. a newbie is more likely to make that transformation than to get a hold of and teach an old dog new tricks. True, 
However, there yeah. are some landmines that uh, if you step on them, whether it be a newbie or a veteran, uh, they yeah. will harm you. They'll, they, they're going to blow up a part of your success in one form or fashion and self-sabotage your success in some form or fashion and even per perhaps kill your business if you let them. So we're going to highlight some of these, uh, what we would call newbie landmines so newbie that- landmines you're aware of what they are and you can avoid them. And then we're going to talk yes. about the shortest path to the cash. So let's talk about that. Newbie yeah. landmines. You know, you're on the phone with uh, newbies on a regular basis, uh, Lane, as uh, people are reaching out for breakthrough calls and wanting to find out what it really takes to get off to a fast and profitable start in their business. And also, of course, sure. we talk we talk to veterans as well who want to up level. But since we're talking specifically about newbies, what are the, some of the common landmines we see that uh, causes them to unwittingly thwart or sabotage their success? Yeah, uh, I'd say number one is, op uh, I'd say uh, delusional optimism uh, yeah. in the sense that nobody wants to think they're going to become a statistic. Well, you know, statistics aren't the extraordinary. Uh, you know, they are, they are the rule, not the exception, right? So yeah. four out of five of y'all are going to fail, period. End of story, game over. And, and, and for the one out of five that do survive, you're only going to make 70 K statistically it's the mean, right? So, so 60, yeah. so, so 62 and a half percent of you are going to make 70 K or less period yeah. end of story game over. So, don't so my stats folks, if you don't know, right. now, you know, yeah. So, so the, the point is, yeah, it, 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 there's different it, being able to discern the distinction between, you know, your goal versus what is likely to happen and, and to understand what you're up against. Yeah, and so just to remind you guys, we're here not to rain on your parade. We're here to right. have the you know your eye meet the eye of the tiger and face reality, so that you can be Change equipped it. for reality. Because there's right. only there's only one thing worse than going to the gunfight. It's going to a gunfight unarmed and naked. Right. Right. <laughs> if you're unequipped and ill-equipped, we're going to have a problem. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we're going to have a problem. And you're exactly right. You know, everyone thinks they're the, the, the rare unicorn who's going to be the exception instead of the rule. You know, everyone thinks that, hey, yeah, Russian roulette might be dangerous, but I'm going to be the one who survives and doesn't blow my brains up. Um, but the problem is, is that there are real winds that gale against you, that if you don't get adequately prepared to not just survive those winds, 100%. But, but thrive in the face of them, you're yep. going to have your proverbial ship crash against the rocks and you're going to be another one of those statistics. So yeah, truth yeah. be told, 80% of newbies get chewed up and spat out within the first two years. And those who manage to survive only make 70 K while they're grinding way too long, way too hard, busting their hump, making peanuts when they could be kicking ass and taking names and thriving while they're, right. you know, their counterparts and their peers are struggling just to survive. So sure. yeah. So uh, delusional optimism is one landmine you definitely want to steer clear of. Does that mean that you know you're you're the sky is falling pessimist? No, no. we're not. We're not asking you guys to be pessimists. What we are asking you is to exercise what I call accurate thinking. That means true, hey, true, true, you, true courage is 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 still acting knowing the consequences. I mean that's yeah. like the definition of courage. Yeah, and then and then if you want to have courage and have the mind of a champion, it's okay. Yes, there's a chance I could fail here, but you know what? I'm going to do all in my power to ensure I right. win. If right. I'm heading to war, I'm not going with a freaking pea shooter. I'm going with a tank. Oh, right? Exactly. I'm going with all the guns ablazing. And far too often, we see these newbies. They're telling themselves it's just going to be lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows, and they're going to crutch it. And meanwhile, they're thrown into the wilderness unarmed and naked. And then they wonder why they're getting chewed up and spat out and why it's so freaking yeah. hard to close loans. Well, wonder no longer. You should probably have some clothes on, and you should probably have some weapons and some tools, and you should probably have some time in scout school to figure out how to actually survive a night, let alone <laughs> your life in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we had a saying in the scouts, if it's a fair fight, you planned it wrong. Right, exactly. You don't want it. You never want it to be a fair fight, even, oh. if, you're, even if you're a Navy SEAL or a Ranger. In fact, the the higher you go up in, in special forces, the more they teach you to have it be an unfair fight to your advantage. Yes. That's why it's yes. called special forces instead yeah. of getting your ass kicked forces. 
right? Combat is supposed to be easy. Training is hard. <laughs> so that's where you realize, okay, we're up to a formidable competition here. This is going to be a formidable feat just to achieve success. And I need to do all in my power to prepare Exactly. To sweat in training so I don't bleed in battle. That's the complete opposite of what we see a lot of newbie loan officers have as mindset. And that's why they get their ass kicked because they don't realize this is the front lines of capitalism, friends. It is yep. unforgiving. And you can either learn the hard way by getting your ass kicked for a few months or a couple of years, or you can learn through other people's blood, sweat, and tears and prepare yep. yourself in advance. There's two ways to learn. Learn from your own mistakes, which are mighty freaking costly or learn exactly. from someone else's mistakes and skip all the drama and trauma and trials and tribulations. You tell me, which would you prefer? Tough wise man, <laughs> wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Um, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, the second landmine I've, I've, I've noticed with, uh, with newbie loan officers is they don't understand what business they're in. They, 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 yeah, the, the whole title of mortgage loan officer is misleading because you're not doing any of the underwriting. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, no, no, no. You're compensated for acquiring new business. Your title should be mortgage business development officer. Right. And, 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 and so being good with numbers means absolutely actively squat to, to your income. Nothing, nothing. Zero. Zero. No, it, 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 and, and so, and so that landmine is, uh, uh, it, which is a kissing cousin of, of delusional optimism. Uh, you know, these newbie mortgage loan officers think, okay, I'm good with numbers. They jump in the game, they exhaust their natural network, and then they're they're left with the same lame proposition as every other loan officer of great rates, great service, and no connections. And then they wonder why they're not making anything. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's the same thing. It's inextricably linked with this delusional optimism. Because right. They see other people that have been in the game for 10, 20 years and they're making money hand over fist. And they're like, man, this guy doesn't seem all that intelligent. This guy doesn't seem that you know extraordinary. They don't seem like a unicorn like me. I'm a freaking badass. And so you know, they kind of just take it at first glance. They don't realize this person started 10, 15, 20 years ago and right. the shit that worked for them 10, 20 years ago just didn't work anymore. Cold calling doesn't no. work anymore. You know, and, showing and up and donuts doesn't work anymore. Open house visits don't work anymore. Buying no. crap off the internet doesn't work anymore you know mm -hmm. no so and, and 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 Dorn, like uh i just to share a personal example i i went through that metamorphosis as a financial advisor which is even worse than a mortgage loan officer because at least with a mortgage loan it's a commodity you absolutely need you don't need financial advice right uh, and and after i had exhausted my natural network i realized that the whole game is set up for these veterans to reel in these newbies Right. So that they can get access to their natural network. And as soon as that's exhausted, they get chewed up, spat out. And the veteran is yeah. left with your database. Burn and burn. Yeah, burn no, it, it, the whole system is designed for that. And yeah. and, and uh, so uh, anyway, what so what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is for me, it was a very, tra very traumatic experience. After I finished calling all of my army buddies, my family to, to, get, to solicit their their 401k. And then I was like, well, shoot, who am I going to call now? And, yeah. and, and so that I started calling CPA saying, hey, I'm really good with numbers. I, you know, let me talk to your clients. And, and just the, the uh, humiliating shots to the balls, excuse my language, I, I got. Every time I got on that phone talking to these CPAs, I was like, oh, my God, I got to find a better way. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about banging your head against, get head against the wall doing it the hard way, right? Easy for me to yes. say. Yes. Yeah. So, so, you know, <laughs> this is something I know if anyone watching, listening to this, who's a newbie, who's done even a few cold calls can intimately relate to, because it doesn't take many of those cold calls to realize this is freaking doing it the hard way. But this is what most of these you know, so-called experts and coaches are telling you to do. Make your 40 it's cold calls to more to realtors every, every freaking Monday. And just keep grinding and eventually, you know, you throw you enough yogurt to the fan, and eventually something's gonna stick. And this yeah. is literally this is literally the 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 secret sauce to success that they're recommending for you to do. My and God, it was like in my early twenties. If I if I if I uh, uh, talk to enough girls in the bar, eventually one will go out with me. <laughs> right. And it's true. I mean, it is a numbers game. 
Like I said before, if you throw enough yogurt to the fan, eventually something's going to stick. But come on now. You know, you don't want to be hoping you're going to win. You you want to be knowing you're going to win. We don't smoke exactly. the hope. Though. Hope is great no. if you're in prison, but it doesn't make yeah. for a very good marketing plan, does it? I mean, that's called hope prison, where you're hoping it's going to pan out. Meanwhile, your bank account's drying up, and you've only got a few more days or weeks before you're going to have to tap out and you know stick right. your tail between your legs and throw in the proverbial white towel and go back to nine to five prison. And unfortunately, yep. that's the fate for at least 80% of people in this business within the first two years. And having yes, to go sir. back to a nine to five prison with an office ball and chain, ball and chain around their ankle, being miserable every freaking day with a micromanager breathing down their neck every day and living under this glass ceiling of a, a, a chump ass salary where they can hardly feed their family on it or having to bust their hump working crazy hours to have a decent salary. And meanwhile, yep. watching their kids grow up on social media because they can't be at the ball games, they can't be at the dance recitals, they can't, you know, pick their kid up at school after school when they want to because they're grinding for another two, three, four hours after their kids are even off. Sometimes they're getting off, you know, off school, or rather, getting off work, and their kids are already in bed asleep. You know what I mean? It's like that's the fate that a lot of people have to go back to if they don't figure out how to claim their freedom in this business. So the consequences are significant to be sure. What are some other landmines you see for, for oh. newbies that, that cause them to crash and burn? Yeah, I'd say uh, the next big one, also a close kissing cousin of the of the first two. And th these are also close together, but uh, the, it, it's it's thinking that great uh, having access to great rates and, and providing great service is a value proposition. Right, you know, so basically, uh, no value prop or a weak ass value prop that hasn't right. become a replaceable commodity. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and that's and very much uh, like you said, a kissing cousin of of the I'm in the mortgage business versus the business you really are in, the marketing right. business, right? Right. So that's kind of a symptom of not realizing what business you're in. But truth be told, you know, you're going to your company, you're expecting them to give you great coaching and great support because you're seeing other people in the company kicking ass. You're like. They must have great leadership, great support. They must be able to give me everything I need to win. They're going to fill my quiver with some kick-ass uh, arrows that I can sling from my bow, and I, I'm going to just crush it. And then it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't take time for much time for you to realize after a few weeks in the game that they're just going to give you training on how to find a home for the loan and what yep. – you know, what different lenders you have and what kind of regulations and compliance right. you need to follow. And then it's on you. It's like a pat on the back and say, go get them, Tiger. They might, teach you, they might teach you how to fill out the paperwork properly. <laughs> yeah. And they might actually help you close a loan once you find a good prospect. The problem is they don't get you the good prospects or they give you a no. bunch of crap leads from Zillow that you have to sift through 100 or 200 to find one single gold nugget that you, you can even get pre-approved let alone closed and now you're burning and churning through all this time time you can never get back going nowhere making chump change because you don't right. have a method to actually get good quality leads so that's another thing too is like relying too much on the company right you've got you're all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and all fired up and excited because you joined this fantastic company and they've got great support and great leadership but what you don't realize is they can't give you that which they don't have they can only give you what they have and what they have is great rates great. and great back end support, hopefully. hopefully. And hopefully they can help you close the loan once you get the deal. What they can't give you is an absolute shortest path to the cash right. method right. to be able to attract top producing agents to make you their exclusive without cold calling yep. because they don't know how to do it. And I'm giving away, I'm kind of stealing the thunder of the shortest path to the cash, <laughs> but or in that I'm here <laughs> and and I, like forgive me for being cynical but I, I I feel that the system is set up that way on purpose uh, for the benefit of the veterans uh, I mean uh, when you look one thing you're always taught at law school is you know besides caveat emptor buyer beware is qui bono you know who's benefiting who benefits from your failure as a newbie uh, the veteran who's going to retain all your relationships like it, of course they don't teach you how to how to be self-sustaining <laughs> Yeah, and even if they do, let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, let's be fair. Let's give okay. them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, we'll, we'll give we'll give some added extravagant grace, <laughs> right? We'll, we'll be we'll be 
optimists here will say that they have a positive intent. They truly care about you because they understand that your success is their success. If they're, you know, worth their salt as an entrepreneur sure. and as a leader, then we're going to assume that they come from that perspective. The problem is how they built their book of business is old school. Oh. They did cold yep. calling. They went to yep. open houses. They showed up at off at real estate offices with freaking donuts. Well, literally, that's how they build their business. And that was 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago. Right. And now they're coming to you with the same mindset that that's the way to grow your business. That doesn't work anymore. So mm -hmm. they can't give you that which they don't have. And now they're fat and lazy, fat and happy and lazy, feeding off a big book of business, doing two, three, four, five, six million a month. Yeah, wonder why you can't do it. Without even trying because right. they have that book of business. And yep. meanwhile, you're starting from scratch with nothing. Right. And you're trying to use their method that worked 20 years ago for the 21st century no. that was used in the dark ages. It ain't going to no. work. You guys know no. it. That's why you're listening to this because you've been banging your head against the wall, doing it the freaking hard way. And you're thinking to yourself, there's got to be a better way. And indeed yep. there is. And that's why we're doing this no. podcast. And, and, and during the last landmine, I really wanted to touch on, I've noticed is, is uh, 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 the, I've noticed a lot of newbies, they, they look at the veterans and they think that that was achieved just through pure sweat. And one thing I noticed as a very young financial advisor was, uh, you know, just, just how much the veterans were investing in their own business. And, mm -hmm. and so coming up and so, and, and for me, a, a significant emotional event was being able to discern the difference of a true cost where it, it, it's just, it, it's a sunk cost. I, I have to pay it to be in the game. Versus an investment that I'm 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 forking over this cash in order to reap a benefit, and 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 really that distinction was the major was 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 really the, the breakthrough uh, that allowed me to go from from being a scared financial advisor who just ran out of his network to being at the top of my rookie class and the powers that be were like why aren't you doing it the old school way like but right. yeah yeah so it's kind of like the uh, twenty year veteran. And there's two different types of 20 year veterans. There's right. one that had the first year, the methods from year one replicated 20 times over, doing the same old thing, getting the same old results. Right. Mass, working 60, 70 hour a week, struggling to make six figures. Right. And, that, and then there's the veteran who learns from challenges, failures, learning experiences, as well as learning from other people's failures right. and trials and tribulations and is investing in themselves strategically so that they can bypass those unnecessary landmines and yeah. bypass having to go through all that painstaking toil and frustration themselves to just go straight yep. to what works. So exactly. in other words, instead of trying to figure out the recipe recipe on how to, how to you know, make souffle, if you've never made souffle before, try and invent a way to make souffle. You can do it until <laughs> yeah. cows come home and it's gonna be garbage every time. Or you can Google it and you can have a recipe from a master chef and, and create a kick-ass delicious souffle from the first iteration. Why? Because you bypassed all the trial Training. and error, right? And so I think yeah. that's a big reason why uh, good old Benny Franklin, he had a famous line. He said, for the best return on your money, pour your Invest purse in your head. Pour yeah, your purse so in your head. Right. Exactly. And, and, and so that, uh, that, 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 that landmine I'm, I, I'm wanting to caution the newbies on is, 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 is just uh, understanding the difference between a cost and an investment and to treat your job like it's an actual business. And there isn't a business out there that isn't spending money on advertising and sharpening its competitive advantage. It's how you stay relevant. That's how you stay expanding, period. End of story. Game over. Yeah. But we see this kind of mindset a lot in MLM. You know, it's like easy come, yeah. easy go. So you get these people, well-intended, well-meaning perhaps, but you get them, you know, and they, they come in for a couple hundred bucks, 500 bucks, 700 bucks, whatever. It's easy to get right. in. It's also easy to get out. Similar thing with mortgage. Sure, you got to, you know, study for a test. You got to pass a test. You got to get a license. You got to hang your hat somewhere. But it's still relatively easy to get in. You don't have to be a freaking rocket scientist. You know, no. you just have to have a couple brain cells to rub together and a pleasing personality, hopefully, to at least have some prerequisites to getting in the game to have a chance of success. 
But then people get in this business and they treat it like it's a freaking MLM thing where you're hawking soaps, potions, and lotions to people who don't need it and can't afford it. It's like just this hobby. They treat it like a hobby. They don't have any business capital. They don't no. even think that it's even relevant to get no. business capital or startup capital. They're like, wow, there's a novel concept. I want to have a big business making 300000 a year. Maybe I should have some business capital get started. Maybe I should actually invest in myself to actually figure out how to win. Maybe I should actually get a gun and some clothes before I go into the wilderness and try and survive. Novel, yeah. novel concept, right? Uh, so, you know, I'm being facetious, but this is, this is the, literally the kind of just delusional optimist thinking that a lot of newbies have. And that's why they get chewed up and spat out. And there's so there's such a high fight fatality rate in this business with newbies. So let's talk about the impact of that. We call it the tuition of not knowing. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that, Lane, the tuition of not knowing. I, I, well, I mean, yeah, there, you actually hit the nail on the head earlier, Doran. There's two kinds of veterans out there. There's there's the 20-year uh, veteran who, who uh, who just through the process of repetition, doing the same thing for 20 straight years to build his book. And then there's the one year freaking rock star who uh, used the principle of leverage uh, to get to get to the same point in one year. I mean, yeah. so so it comes down to is either way you're going to pay, you're going to pay in time, or you're going to pay in money. So, you know, or both with, or both. And, and, and so the question is, uh, you know, which, you know, which tuition uh, do you, are, you want to pay? You're going to pay regardless. It, 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 it's just a question of, of uh, you know, what's more important to you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can either pay the hefty tuition of time and money unnecessarily, yep. but absolutely is a requirement. If you use yep. it as a default setting, the default setting is the tuition of not knowing. You cannot right. escape it. It's like taxes. It's mm -hmm. inescapable. Yep. Right. So you're either going to pay that hefty price in both time and money. I think the right. heavier price is the time because you can always make more money. You can't get that time back. It's no, gone. You'll never get time back. It's worth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you're going to pay that hefty tuition paying 10, 20, 30, 100 X what you would had you paid strategically with a yep. bold, intelligent, strategic investment in your breakthrough with a proven yep. formula, with the right structure and the right support to be able to get to that 20 year income in one year and yep. get straight to it. It's called condensing timeframes, condensed <laughs> decades into days or, yes. or by virtue of default, the default setting, you mm -hmm. would pay the tuition of not knowing, which is not knowing how to attract top producing agents to make you their exclusive without cold calling. And right. by virtue of that, settling for the substandard bottom feeding, whining, stealing, complaining, jelly donut eating, low producing agents to send you Jack Dudley squat and bring a whole lot of drama and trauma and wasted time and energy to the equation. Not knowing how to mine the gold from your database systematically and maximize reap and referral business. Not knowing how to schedule your days for maximum productivity and profit, not knowing yep. how to use the three pounds of meat between your ears to really <laughs> chew up and power like a champion and therefore yep. having stinking thinking that literally self-sabotages your success every day without even knowing it. So you're going to pay the price either way. You're either going to pay the price of the tuition of not knowing to the university of not knowing, and it will steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your power and steal your profits and waste your freaking life, banging your yep. head against the wall, going nowhere. Or you're going to pay the price proactively, strategically as an investment, not a cost, but an investment that right. gives you 10x, 100x, 200x a return on your money and condenses time frames. So yep. you can get to where you would have been grinding, working 60, 80 hours a week after 10 years. You can get there in one freaking year if yeah. you have the right formula, if you have the recipe to bake souffle from the master chef from day one. Right. Yeah. So, so stick that in your pipe and smoke, good friends. Marinate your mind happy. on that. Marinate <laughs> exactly. your mind on that. That's some real yes, talk. Right there. Now, yes, let's sir. talk about the shortest path to the cash. So oh, everyone yeah. wants to know, we've been – you know, really, Dancing around it up. we've been building <laughs> it up to a fever pitch of anticipation. Yeah. We're at a, a fever pitch. We're about to reach that climax. Y'all get ready. Strap on your seatbelt. Here we go. Yeah. What's the shortest path to the cash? I mean, we've got so many different options out there, right? 
We got Zillow leads. We got Google AdWords. We got Facebook ads. We got, you know, going after agents. We got CPAs. We got financial planners. We got all these different things you could be doing. Posting videos on social media, posting memes that make people giggle on social media, whatever it is, right? There's a million and one things. We got LinkedIn, we got Instagram. Yeah. So what is the shortest path to the cash? If we could just choose one thing that makes the cash register ring with the most zeros and commas, what is it? Lay it down are, on me, brother. What is are we talk, we're talking about sustainable and scalable? Sustainable and scalable. What's the shortest path to the cash and what keeps it's the cash simple. register ringing once we get there? It, 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 it's it's matching the bait to what you're fishing for. I, I mean, you're, you're you're the fast path to the cash is a brand new realtor. I'm sorry, mortgage loan officer. I already gave it away. Is 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 to use the right bait to attract heavy hitting realtors who are actually producing and treating their job like a business, not like a hobby, not like an MLM scheme that are doing you know one and a half two deals a month that they can feed you and making them your exclusive. Period. End of story. Game over. But aren't those agents hard to get? I mean, aren't they already oh. married to their current lender? No, they they, they are. are. I don't have enough confidence. I'm a newbie. What, what yeah. are they going to? What am I going to tell them when they when they ask me? You know, how many deals have you done? And yeah. I only say one or none. You yeah. know, how am I going to get over that hurdle, Lane? Eh? All they're doing is sizing you up to see if you're going to be worth. I mean, they're asking that to see if you're going to be worth their time. I mean, they're merchant. I'm, I'm sorry, they're not mercenaries. This is capitalism. It's what can you do for them? So if you don't have a conveyor belt of of leads for the realtor, they're not going to have a conveyor belt of deals for you to process. It, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, we can even take that one step further instead of giving them leads, which is a lot of a lot of these yeah. programs you see nowadays where they're saying, hey, you know, we're going to generate leads, a bunch of crap leads from Facebook or a bunch of crap leads from this, that, that or other. Right. I've got news for you, friends. Your realtors, top producing agents, and even the right. bottom feeders don't want freaking leads. What no, they, they want, want are pre-approvals. Yeah, they want pre approval buyers that have yeah. a pre-approval letter yeah. that so, talk for what they got, who are ready to buy now and have the money to do it. So, so you know, the shortest, the, the mic drop on the shortest, shortest path to the cash is pretty simple. It's having a, a list of heavy hitting realtors and a conveyor belt of pre-approvals and simply communicating to that list of realtors, hey, this is what I got. Susie Q, who's pre-approved to 600,000, wants to buy in 30 days. And we have a sit down. <laughs> yeah, what was that? I mean, you don't have to do any cold calling for that. I mean, oh. come on now. You, don't, you would not even have one iota of reservation picking up the oh. phone and, and calling a top producer in your market who's doing 100 plus transactions a year. If right. you have a hot for what you got, pre-approved buyer who's looking for a top oh. notch agent, and you're now able to hand that to that top producing agent on a and, and, platform of silver spoon. And Doran, you were talking about you know the confidence of being able to answer that question of, oh, you've only done one deal. It's like, okay, Mr. Realtor, yes, I've been a loan officer for seven days. Check it out. Here is my conveyor belt of future pre-approvals. Would you like them? <laughs> it's called how irrelevant a question can you give me? Do you really give a rat's ass how many days or weeks or years I've been in the business? I'm feeding you business, sucker. I got the yeah. cookie. We flip the script so they need you more than we need them, right? Exactly. Get, get, get yourself in the power position. Far yeah. too often. Loan officers are basically in the bitch position, if I can call it that, yes. right? Yeah, no, Where they the are. Realtor, the realtor treats them as their loan officer bitch because right. they see them as a replaceable commodity and they, yep. they treat them as such. And then they and then you guys wonder why realtors are so annoying and so arrogant and so apathetic and so flaky and so demanding. It's because they're doing that. you a favor. They're doing you charity. And you're, and you're showing up as the loan parasite. Sucking them yeah. dry for loans because you're not giving them anything in return that's really significant and irreplaceable and indispensable. And therein yeah. lies the problem. Good so boy. that's why newbies and veterans alike hire us to solve that right. problem among many. Right. They hire us because they realize they can try and try and re reinvent the wheel on their own with this and try and figure out the recipe for the bake a, baking a master chef souffle without going on Google and just try and come up with it just through the ethers, just by virtue of trying to guess and hope and wish. Or they can get straight to what works from day one, 
that can just stick their, their wheels in the proverbial grooves on the tracks of what works, the words that work, the formula that works, the structure that works, the approach that works, the system that works to get these top producing agents hot for what you got before you even talk to them. Yeah. Can you imagine folks listening and watching, can you imagine booking half of that in one day? Let's just say five or six in one day with top producing agents, all of them top producers doing 20 plus transactions a year. Chances are you haven't done that in the last freaking year let alone no. in one day, right? No. So we're one talking day. game changing. We're talking game changing. Yeah. There's two things. One is if someone it doesn't get it, if you're not jiving with them, if they're arrogant, if they're apathetic, if they're giving you attitude, if they're giving yeah, you any There's a hundred more of them. Disqualify <laughs> them in a yeah. heartbeat. They're yeah. not interviewing you. You're interviewing them. You're in the power position. Let's not get things yes. twisted, right? Yes. So now they have to qualify to have the privilege to work on your team, not the other way around. Exactly. They have to qualify to thread the noodle, needle on your terms and your, not, your expectations, not the other way around, right? So notice a total shift in mindset, a total shift yep. in the dynamics energetically where yep. you no longer have to worry about rejection. You no longer have to worry about the, the, the dignity castrating experience of yeah. prospecting and feeling yeah. needy and having to grovel and kiss ass and you know breathe wind up their proverbial skirts just to get their approval screw that you're only working with rock stars who are cool cats that you dig that you have great synergy with that you know in steve sims terms from the blue fisher book they pass the chug test which means they do great business. They are receptive and open to growing their business. They're ambitious. They're coachable and receptive to learning and growing. They don't think their shit doesn't stink. They're actually, you know, humble enough to realize they don't have all the answers. And they're just straight up cool cats. You would yep. go and have a bevy with them. That's what Steve Sims calls the chunk test, where it's like, man, I'd have them to my birthday party barbecue. <laughs> I'd have them to my, you know, my my 20th wedding anniversary party or whatever, like they, they pass the chug test. They are cool yep. cats that you would consider a true friend because you have great synergy with. You don't have exactly. to put up with bullshit and drama and trauma and all that nonsense. You fire yeah. those people and you replace them with those who you have synergy with. That's what I'm oh, talking about. That's right. right? No, so that's, that's the shortest the, path. That is indeed the shortest path to the cash. Uh, problem is most people have to learn the hard way that, uh, you know, through the university of not knowing, the tuition of university of not knowing that, you know, the default setting to being on the front lines of capitalism as a loan officer is not, you know, making three to 500 Gs a year working, you know, 40 hours a week or less. It's just not. That's called extraordinary. And extraordinary does not come from ordinary thinking and it does not come from an ordinary approach. No. So if you guys want to learn the secret sauce and the shortest path to the cash and you don't want to mess around doing it the hard way, and you want to learn how you know our clients are getting kick-ass results. Like we're talking not just average results, we're talking kick-ass results. Case in point, you know, Jed Barker did it went from two loans a month in February of this year to 20 loans a month this month. 20 loans, 20 loans. That's a 10x increase in seven months, eight months. Uh, Jason Cope went from almost nothing in volume. He's doing about 200, 300 a month in volume to a million plus a month. So we like at least 3X, 5X his business in just two months. Uh, Johnny Supa, he went from uh, four deals from January to April in his first four months of uh, his career before he started working with us. He went from that to literally 40 deals in the final eight months of the year from April till December. That's what I call bad freaking ass, friends. Yeah. That's what I call badass. That kind of stuff doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. Welcome to Planet Prosper. That's how we write. Right. right? So that being said, I want to invite you guys to take advantage of an opportunity if, and these are a few really important ifs, if you're a residential mortgage professional on 100% commission, you've got an 80 basis point comp plan or better, okay? And you are freaking sick and tired of settling for second best in your business. Sure, you might be good, but if you're doing good, you realize that you're capable of great. And you realize that, you know, 
knowing what you're capable of, you're a bit like the chicken scratching around in the chicken yard when you know you have eagle wings and you're designed to soar with the eagles. You know there's a part of you that's called to more, called to be more and achieve more. And you're sick and tired of grinding it, doing it the hard way. And you're ready to at least add an extra $100,000 of income to your business in the next 12 months in terms of either revenue and or profits. If that's you and you're ready to have a real talk, honest conversation about what it's really going to take to take that, create that breakthrough and you're ready to find out how to get that shortest path to the cash working for you in your business, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we just get on the phone, have an honest conversation and see where you're at now, where you want to be and how we can help you get there. You're going to hop on the phone with either me, Lane, or one of our consultants. And we're just going to literally lift up the hood and see where you're at, where you want to be. If we can help you bridge the gap from where you are you want to, to where you want to be, we'll show you what that looks like. If we can't, to be completely frank and real with you, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with more clarity than you've had in your entire career. I guarantee it. You'll have more clarity on what's holding you back, but more importantly, more clarity on the shortest path to the cash and how to cut out the clutter, cut out the bullshit, cut out all the nonsense and all the bright, shiny objects and all the silver bullets and all that fluff and BS out there and just get straight to what freaking works. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Just like you see on the screen, if you can see it on your screen, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call. We'll, we'll talk and see what we can do to help you. Lane, anything else you'd like to leave them with as uh, final words to marinate their minds on before we wrap up today? It's just if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. I mean, yep. let's, let's, let's be rational. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, right? So if what you're doing ain't working, chances are it's going to continue to not work. And doing more of what doesn't work is the definition of insanity, right? So let's get you, if you're noticing what you're doing ain't working at the level you need to, let's get you on the phone. Let's talk about what it's going to take to pour some gasoline on the fire. Yeah. And let's, let's take you from using a gardening trowel to build the hole for the foundation for your skyscraper. Let's switch that up to a freaking excavator. That's what I'm yeah, talking that's right. about. There's that's no right. brownie points. There's no brownie points or merit badges for doing it the hard way. No. So let's just get straight to what works, shall we? That's the path. Awesome, brother. Lane, I appreciate you, brother. This is our inaugural Lane and Doran podcast. If you're digging it, hit us up on yeah. uh, the Facebook or hit us up on uh, the Apple iTunes section and give us a five-star review. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you're not digging it, we don't want to hear from you. Just saying. Because <laughs> we're going to keep bringing it. We ain't done. <laughs> it. We're done. It's the inaugural. We're just getting started, baby. <laughs> Wayne, I appreciate you, man. Super stoked, privileged. Likewise. To be on the team. Appreciate and uh, looking forward to doing this again. I'll see you. All right, guys, you've been talking to or listening to rather Doran Aldana and Lane Boland, MortgageMarketingCoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Remember, go forth, take massive action, but don't just take massive action. Take massive action with massive, massive positive energy. That means yeah. confidence, certainty, clarity, enthusiasm. And if you don't have the game plan and the battle plan and the battle weapons to do that, get with us. Let us show you how to get equipped to win. Yep. And we will see you on the other side, friends. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. Peace. Bye.